Why is, why is this book so hated? Why do they try to prevent you at all costs from reading this book? Do you actually think people read this book? Do you know how many pages this book is? About 1,075 pages. But the text is so tiny. It looks big on the camera right now, but the text is so tiny. Let me find another book to compare it to. So we're going to look. This is my book here, Simulation Theory. There's the size of the text there. And granted, it's a larger format. And now let's look at the size of this. Well, actually, it looks... Again, it, from here, it looks the same Like as I'm looking through my camera. But when I look through my, my own eyes, this text is tiny. Tiny. All right, there's that. Look at here. Tiny text. And it's a thousand pages, over a thousand pages. And people have so much negative stuff to say about this. But for real, do you really think that they consume this entire book to form an adequate opinion of it? Now, I have read this entire book. I read it in 2010. And it profoundly, profoundly changed my life because it armed me. This book armed me it armed me it didn't it didn't provide me any kind of spiritual enlightenment it armed me against the people that have taken advantage of me throughout my life and made me uh strip me of my greatness this restores your greatness if you don't strive for greatness and you don't already feel like you have the greatness within you if you do not have that light that shines brightly and they try but they can't take that away from me. This is the book that explains why. Throughout these pages, and especially in the John Galt speech, it just destroys the culture of death. Now, what's this book about? To make it consistent with the entire agenda of my channel, this book is about a breakaway civilization that has invented free energy technology, but decided to not release it because the way the people were acting, they would utilize the technology for the wrong reasons. And John Galt was the inventor of the motor, the free energy motor. And instead of giving it away, he destroyed it and created his own civilization along with Midas Mulligan and began removing the producers and the men of the mind from reality and brought them to the breakaway civilization somewhere in Colorado hidden by an illusion. Now, could that explain really what's in these thousand plus pages? No. Much like the Matrix, you must have to experience it for yourself, but the accounts in here, the interactions in here. Okay, now let me tell you, the, the enemies of this book will tell you a version of this book that is completely removed from what's actually in here. They'll also tell you that it's a generalization or it's not true or it's this, it's that. Well, they're lying because the interactions in this book I've had in my own experience in life nearly word for word. I've experienced the things in this book nearly word for word and I got to see how to respond to it better than the way I did. This is the book that's given me. If you hear the tone in my voice, it's it's of a it, it, there's a a, ver, a form of anger in it and a desire for revenge. And I just want to shove this down some people's throats. Now that's not a nice way to sell a book, but the lengths that they go to say nothing to see here. Do you think nothing is there to see here? Now Mike Maloney said in the first 400 pages there isn't much, and I'll. I'll I'll kind of give them that, but it kind of sets the stage. And the second time you read it, you, you're able to see what what the first 400 pages meant. But you could just skip those and get right to the Francisco Dancona famous "Money is the root of all evil" speech. And when Mike Maloney read it, it brought him to near tears. And when I hear him read it, same here. The released is the graphic novel for Aunt Ayn Rand's Anthem. This is another great book. Uh, this, it, but if you're into the whole comic book version, it's been turned into a comic book. I like the new direction the Atlas Society is going in. They're making stuff accessible to people. Of Atlas Shrugged that I have t-shirts based on the book. Danishold Repossessions. Ragnar Danishold. 
was the pirate, but but the, the proper name is the privateer. Galt Reardon, 2012. John Galt, Hank Reardon. Danconia Copper Mines. About Francisca Danconia. Got this uh, Atlas Shrugged, now nonfiction. This came out during uh, the era of 2008 to 28 to 2016. But uh, now it's hopefully back to being just a fiction book. I have a Who is John Galt shirt. Theaters of my own free will, along with 3,554 like-minded individuals, I contributed to the Atlas Shrugged Who is John Galt Kickstarter, and we raised $446,907. To show you how fanatical I am about this, here's Atlas Shrugged, part one on DVD, part two on DVD, here's uh, part three, Who is John Galt, Here's a special edition that's personalized to me because I, I, uh, I don't know, I, I, it's got some kind of, look at that, this special edition DVD prepared exclusively for Jonathan Lippy. Special edition, man, look at that, John Galt. And uh, here's Atlas Shrugged on regular Blu-ray. Look at that, that's a cool back, look at that. And then I have, <laughs> I think this is Blu-ray. It's a Blu-ray, possibly DVD, I think it's Blu-ray trilogy in like these collector's edition. One is gold, one's silver, one's copper. Came in these like collector jackets and then the discs themselves look beautiful. It has like nice inserts. And, and every one, I think they're all double discs. I don't even know if I've seen all the bonus footage. Feature film disc, and what is this one? Exclusive special features. Man, I, I got to go through these. It's been a while. Let's see what we do have in here. So it's this cool case opening, and it has the Atlas symbol built into it. And we have the, the dollar sign. Pull this out. That's killer. Dollar sign on that. Is there, let's see what it looks like on the inside. All right, so we have some Who's John Galt stuff there. Oh, look at that disc. It's a money sign. Who is John Galt? So this is a DVD? Oh, I guess that's the Blu-ray. See how it's got a Blu-ray symbol? And then it's got the DVD. That's nice. The, the copper one says Dan Konya because Dan Konya copper. And on the inside, Dan Konya. Yeah. Look at that. This thing is nice. The, the silver one, reared in steel. Look at that, reared in steel. I guess this is part one right here. Look at that, reared in steel. And it's just, it's just the Blu-ray. I think it's supposed to be reared in metal. And all their shirts all said reared in steel as well, but it's, it's called reared in metal. What we got here? And then this is Atlas Shrug there. Yeah. So I'm a fanatic for all things Atlas Shrugged, and you know, there's a lot of a lot of the Atlas Shrugged fans thought the film series was kind of lacking. But I mean, really, how are you gonna fit a thousand pages into three films? The audiobook was sixty hours to read, so it was a sixty-hour audiobook, and three films basically covered four and a half hours of it. Uh, but I think my favorite one was part two. I think this one was done the best. Although Stefan Molyneux thought part one was done really good. And, and part one was good. But I felt like, I don't know, I liked part two. I liked part one as well. Part three kind of, I, I think everybody wanted a little bit more out of part three. But it was good too. Except there was just no Hank Reardon in it. And I don't know. I, it focused a little bit too much on John Galt. And the storyline versus the, the, the knowledge. And the John Galt speech was only like five minutes long when in the audiobook the John Galt speech is three and a half hours long. So it kind of missed the whole super point of it. It kind of modernized it. But hey, whatever. At least we have a trilogy. I heard that there's a Netflix version coming out to cover it more in depth, more accurately. I would 
I would, if they put up a Kickstarter to get that thing happening quicker, I'll definitely contribute to that. Uh, I love Atlas Shrugged. Here's some pictures I have in my little collection. There's the Reardon Steel again. Now that was the original Reardon Steel that I bought before the trilogy was completed. I think I sold that one. There were some copper coins there. There's me with a Reardon Steel shirt back around 2010. Here's a picture of me and my wife at a picnic with my Galt Reardon 2012 shirt. I think that was taken probably in like 2011, 2010. This was uh, when I joined the Atlas Society, they sent me a bunch of brochures of some of the tenants of the Atlas Society. Here's some more, Why Money is Moral, and a third series of, I guess that was, I scanned the front and backs of it. And there's even some more. So I, I, I scan a lot of stuff. These are all pictures from a folder I had that just said Atlas Society. Wow, yeah, there's a lot more than I recall this many. But it was, it was definitely cool. I, the Atlas Society hasn't sent me a bill. I'd gladly repay my dues. I just haven't received the bill in a long time. I don't even know if I'm still a member. But if anybody's in the Atlas Society seeing this, send me a bill. My name is Jonathan Lippy, And here I am on like the 21st floor with an Atlas Shrugged shirt on. Very proud of it. On the back of my golf cart, there is a Who is John Galt bumper sticker. Along with an NRA sticker and a Sig Sauer. I bought this Reardon metal bracelet for my wife for Christmas. She loved it. Maybe I bought it for our anniversary. I can't remember. Maybe it was for her birthday, but I bought it for her as a gift. She's seen the film and she appreciated and values this gift and shows it off to her friends. And it, it melted my heart when she was happy to receive it and that she understood the significance of it and what it meant to me to give it to her. And she wears it proudly. A wonderful wife. And it came in this nice little package. If you see the film or you read the book, I think most guys definitely like that. The, the sentimental value behind it, it's made forged from actual reared metal. There's a photo of that shirt that I received after we funded Atlas Shrug Part 3. And th this picture was taken at the movie theater when I went to see who was John Galt. I had to drive like 85 miles to see the film, but I gladly drove to see it. Maybe it wasn't 85 miles, but it was it was far away. I drove to Jensen Beach. Was it Jensen Beach? It wasn't showing in my town. There's my little... There's my ticket stub for it, Atlas Shrug 3. Back in 2014. I saw part 1 and part 2 in theaters as well. But I saw those in Tampa. I saw, like I said, I saw this one in Jensen Beach. And I even took a, took a picture of the uh, movie theater. And this was the, th we got there early, extra early. And so don't think that the theater was not attended. I just got there long in advance. And there is the trilogy when I first received it. That's on Blu-ray, that special edition Blu-ray trilogy. And here is another picture of the John Galt DVD. Another shot of the John Galt DVDs. There's that special edition Jonathan Lippy John Galt edition. Proud of that. And there is a poster for Atlas Shrugged Part 1, an ad for who is John Galt. This was an ad to purchase Reardon Steel on Blu-ray. Again, that, that Reardon Steel throws me off. It's supposed to be Reardon Metal. And a Galt Reardon 2012 bumper sticker. Here's me wearing my Danconia copper in a video I shot in probably 2013. It was either about Freedom Pop or it was about how I learned to use the and there's uh, how, how I learned to use the law of attraction. There's my wife at a Coke machine with the Reardon steel, the Reardon metal bracelet, making her selection. And there's some Reardon steel. That's the John Galt line, I guess, when they built the railroad tracks with Reardon metal. This was a screenshot of going to see Atlas Shrug 3. I don't think I had a smartphone at the time of seeing parts 1 and 2. That's why I don't have too much memorabilia from it. There's Atlas Shrug 2 on DVD. This was me on my Technuba channel doing an experiment with moist flushable wipes, rocking a different Reardon Steel shirt. This one was black, whereas the previous one you saw was brown. And another ad for Atlas Shrug 3. I guess all the money we put in went to all this advertising. There's the members of the cast of Part 3. I'm not even sure how I got this, but I, this was just a picture I took. And then I guess that's my whole, well, part of my collection all laid out. Maybe that was one 
big purchase day that I made. I'm not sure when I took that, but yeah. And then I guess I added in some additional discs there. Very proud of my collection. But why am I showing you all this? One, I want to let people know that Atlas Shrugged exists as well as the Anthem graphical novel. And it's on YouTube right now. They're making videos for Anthem. I'm promoting Atlas Shrugged right now. It's a profound book. It's considered the second most influential book in America after the Bible. Um, tons of people read it before they become a CEO of a company. I'm also making this to let other people know that, yeah, man, we should be talking about Atlas Shrugged out there, but I'm pretty sure if, if you are an Atlas Shrugged fan, you already do speak on it without any fear. I love to speak on it because I know there's going to be haters out there and you're going to have all your little snide little things, but before you post them, ask yourself and answer this. Did you actually read the book before you talk? Because I know your little talking points that you've been provided and, every, and it's the same stuff from everybody that they've never read it, but they've been told what to think about it and what to say about it. So if you're one of those people, you, you go ahead, go ahead, show everybody how much of a clone you are that you have no thoughts of your own. But if you actually have read the book and you still object to its contents, I'd like to hear from that with sp specific examples, characters, and situations, not vague generalities. If you do like the book, let me know what some of your favorite scenes are. My favorite scenes, my absolute favorite scene is the trial of Hank Reardon. My second most favorite is the, the Concerto of Deliverance. It's so awesome. I love the story of the 20th Century Motor Company. Obviously, we all love Francisco D'Ancona's speech, and I'll put a link in the description below to where Mike Maloney narrates that scene. You got to watch that. I'll also put links to all of the... There's scenes from the films that the Atlas Society have put online for people to view. They're great scenes. Uh, obviously, the John Gold speech, but that one's a lot to endure. I like the wet nurse scene. I like the scene when, when Ragnar Danajolt gives Hank Reardon the, the bars of gold and says that they belong to him anyway. I like a lot of the book, but again... What I most like about it is that John Galt invented the free energy motor and said, you know what, you people will do the wrong thing with this to develop their Project X weapon. In a thousand plus pages, this book is beyond epic and it's literally epic. It's long enough to actually be appropriately called an epic. It's so good. It's one of my favorite books of all time. And, and the craziest part, this is another part that I want people to realize. Ayn Rand is a female. She has written the second greatest book of all time after the Bible. And to me, it's the number one book of all time. You know, I don't really practice the Bible, but I don't want to disrespect those Americans that do see the Bible as the greatest book of all time. After the Bible, Atlas Shrugged is probably the greatest book ever written. It's written by a female. Why is Ayn Rand not celebrated in feminism? Part of the reason why is Anne Rand went on TV. She said, to all you feminists out there, I'm a male chauvinist. <laughs> Something like that. So if you're completely unfamiliar with this, go ahead and just, you can check out the trilogies on DVD or Blu-ray or streaming. Realize that those are like beyond cliff note editions of the actual book. Because obviously you couldn't, you couldn't cover the whole book in that short of a time. But they're there to give you an idea of what's going on. What you also might want to look out for is how much hatred there is for this book and how much people want to suppress it and don't want you to ever look at its contents. I believe, it, it, I know people have not read this because if they did, certain ideologies would not exist anymore. But this is a daunting task of a thousand plus pages to read. And I know most people haven't done it because if they did, this thing is so thorough, such a dagger through the heart of the culture of death, the looters, the cannibals, that uh, I know most people haven't read it, because if they did, a lot of the stuff that has taken place in recent times would not be allowed to happen. So you might want to arm yourself, equip yourself, expand yourself, get the audiobook. I don't, I don't blame you for not wanting to read a thousand pages. I did the audiobook, and I used to listen to it on my way to work, on my way home from work, when I would go on a walk. 60 hours, that's a long time. 
That's that. Atlas Shrugged, I wanted to bring it to your attention. Investigate it. Check out the links in my description below. Explore the space. Atlas Shrugged, Hank Reardon, John Galt, Dagny Taggart, Francisco Dancona, Ragnar Danischolt, Ellis Wyatt, but I mean, I'm not really a fan of Ellis Wyatt, but there he is. Kenneth Daniger, and the rest of the guy. Oh, and Ed- Eddie Willers. Can't forget about Eddie. And I, I forget the guy that tried to back engineer the John Galt motor. And just know, this book was published in 1957, and it was dang near a prophecy between the years 2008 to 2016. I'm out of here. Thank you for watching.